there, guys. How's everybody doing today? We're going to be talking about some fabulous stuff today on acting from all angles. We're going to be talking about another one biting the dust, kind of, sort of. We're actually going to be talking about the subject is help. My kid wants to be an actor. What do I do? Ah. So we're going to be talking about that and a couple of other things along with that. Um, if you were ever a kid who heard that from your parent, this might help you as well. Um, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is Julianne Lichty Stratton, and I am the creator of Actors in Action Professional Acting Training, where we train actors to do their very best work under pressure, at auditions, on bookings, anything like that. We help you develop a process so that you can confidently do that. It's really exciting what we do. All right, let's dive in. So I am super excited about this subject. Um, because I have a lot of experience with it actually from when I was growing up as a kid and this comes from one of my parent one of my parents one of my students parents I have a couple of young students several that I'm working with and one of them was like what do I do help so parents this is for you actors that have had parents like that this is for you too this is for all of us we're gonna be talking about also this is our emotional fitness um, we're on emotional fitness now of our ABCEFs of acting on this one, and it's also slash businessy, a little bit of business to it. So, um, the biggest thing that I can say to parents who have kids that want to be actors and they're not actors themselves and they may not understand it at all is to support them. Support them, support them, support them. I know it's terrifying because you feel like, oh my gosh, my kid is going to be a starving artist. How are they ever going to make money? How are they ever going to provide for themselves and their families or blah, blah, blah? Does this mean they're going to move off to New York or LA and leave me or, or whatever and, um, and live a hard life? So I know you're probably thinking that because that is the stigma that, that the acting world has. It is difficult to be an actor. It's almost impossible. It's a hard life. There's a lot of rejection, and you know what? All of that is true, but it doesn't mean you can't make it. And the number one thing in my working with other actors and in myself, the number one thing I think that helps an actor is if they have confidence in themselves and they believe in themselves. And that really can be something that comes from your parents. So parents, all right, so First of all, I think you need to realize, maybe do a little bit of research into what the business is, which I have a great blog post for that from somebody else's blog I'm going to put up for you to look at. Do some research. Find out the realities of it to quell your own fears, right? Because really, this is sort of an issue that you have. You want to be a good parent. You want to help your child. But if you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to my baby? Um, that's natural for a parent. but also it's not going to be helpful to your little actor. It's just not going to be helpful. All right, so if you have issues like that, I would try to deal with them away from your child. Um, just looking at my notes here. So there is, so you need to look at that, that issue for you. You need to be supportive. How you can be supportive is take your kids seriously. Most people that know they want to act, they know they want to act deep down in their souls pretty early. I knew when I was four years old I wanted to be an actress. And I didn't really know what that meant, but I know I knew that that's what I wanted. And growing up in my house, it was like, "What? Do you want to be an actress? Oh no, you're going to go to hell. You're going to like starve to death. You're going to blah, blah blah. Actresses are whatever, scary." So it wasn't very effective for me to hear that from my parents all the time, or just have it implied, um, especially with such a strong drive to act that I just. I had to do it. I could not stay out of a play. I could not stay out of acting classes. I, I just couldn't do it. I was always there. It was just such a part of me. And finally, my parents were like, okay. Um, <laughs> but had in the formative years, they've been like, yeah, great. Let's get you into acting classes. How can we get you into plays? I mean, they didn't like tell me I couldn't audition and I couldn't do stuff. But it was sort of, yeah, that's great. You can do that now. But when you grow up, you're going to get smart and be a physical therapist or whatever. So take that seriously with them, listen to them, listen to them, and then do everything you can to make this possible for them. And I'm gonna tell you what you can do. Um, the best thing you can do is get them into great training. 
get them in a really good class and be selective. You don't want to get them in a junky class. It's not going to teach them good stuff and get them in bad habits. You want to get them in a good class that they can learn audition skills, that they can learn how to have technique, that they can learn how to be in touch with themselves. They can learn um, to how to use their voice. So get them in there. It's just like the kids that their parents you know, put them in ballet. Some of those kids turn out to be professional ballerinas, and that's great. They start when they're eight, when they're five. They have all this time. If you start your child, thank you, I'm getting a thumbs up for that. Yeah, if you start your child young and you support them, they are going to have an advantage over so many other actors. If they are feeling like this is a this is a good thing, yeah, it might be hard, but I've got support and I can do it. And if they have those skills starting off young, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So do that. Um, teach them financial responsibility. Start teaching them how does money work? How do you, you spend? You know, what is another thing you can develop, other skills you can develop to help supplement your acting income while you're doing it. But not like you have to be a physical therapist or a doctor and then you can, you know, whatever. Um, the, the worst one, <laughs> I think is when kids want to be actors and their parents are like, well, maybe you should be a lawyer because then you can act in the court, act in the courtroom. And the thing is, is if kids really want to be actors, they're going to do it anyway. It's just like with everything else with kids, right? If they really want to be actors, they're going to do it. If they don't, you know, if it is a phase, they're going to let it go. And maybe they will end up going to law school. They'll decide for themselves. You know, I like acting, but I want to, I want to use my brain in a different way. I want to help people in a different way. So trust it. Just trust. Trust them. Um, manners. They need to be taught manners. It's respect for others, uh, especially the young ones. No fidgeting. <laughs> That's one thing that when I work with kids, they fidget. They go into auditions. They're pulling at their shirts and they're you know doing all this stuff. Teach them just to be relaxed and be able to be with other adults and with uh, with adults and with other kids and just. Be relaxed and have manners. You don't want to take a kid to the audition and have them climbing on the couches and jumping up and down and screaming. Um, I'm not saying that you would as a parent, but you want to teach them the proper etiquette of just being a human being, and that translates into how they're going to be at auditions. The next thing that is really huge is memorization. You know, we talk about that, I talk about that a lot with my students because memorization is humongous. If you can't memorize quickly, if you can, let me say it this way, if you can memorize quickly, you are going to have a huge advantage over so many other people. And memorization is just a skill. It is a skill that you can learn how to do. And I have lots of different memorization techniques, which I could actually talk about at another time. Um, so if you want to know what those are, just get in touch with me and I can let you know. But even like start them out, like memorize the grocery list. Start them out young. Memorize the, the um, times tables. Do different things that work on memorization that's really, really important. Um, and let me just say this, that the acting world is hungry for good actors at any age. You know, especially young actors. A lot of young actors are instinctual and can act, you know, pretty well under the right circumstances. But if you get an actor, a young actor in there who can give them what they want, wow, directors will be doing backflips. They'll be writing a series for them. Can't promise you that. I can promise you that directors will be doing backflips and be super happy. Um, so if you can get your kid into a great class and get them acting and doing what they want to do, um, getting really good at that, it's going to, it's going to benefit the world. It'll benefit the acting world. It'll benefit you. It'll be really great. Um, I was going to say one other thing about that and I just lost my train of thought. So I'll go on, um, with something else. So trying to, I mean, there's a difference between like being a stage mom and pushing your kid to do this and really listening if they want to do it. And you kind of have to keep listening to them and maybe you might have to encourage them too because sometimes it gets hard you know like in ballet class I took ballet when I was little and I remember I wanted to quit after the first couple of weeks because it was hard and my mom was like no you're gonna stay same thing with piano you know you need to have that discipline of like let's keep doing it I know you enjoy this but don't push them it's a fine balance I know just as all parenting is isn't it so the, la the last thing I'm going to say about this is um why do they want to act, you know, or why do you want them to act, or why do you want, why do they want to act? Is it for fame and fortune? Is it, um, is it because they just love it? Because fame and fortune, that's a fun goal and that's great, but it doesn't happen to a lot of actors. Not that success doesn't happen. Success can happen, but success for an actor doesn't necessarily mean winning an Oscar. It means making a living acting. It means being fulfilled from your work and getting money from it. Um, so, 
if your kid's thinking about, I want to be rich and famous, that's great, that's fun. But nurture the part of them that wants to act for the love of acting and for the service that we're doing. Because actors really are, we're the shaman, one of the shamans, artists are shamans. We help feed the world emotionally. We help artistically feed the world. We help um, inspire people and make life worth living. So it's really actually a very important thing that we're doing. It's pretty much like being a doctor. So, you know, just get over it. It's basically like your, your child's being a heart surgeon and they may get to play one on TV. So that's really cool. Let's move to actors who, we're in that spot of not being supported by your parents. I know there's probably a ton of us out there. I know I was, like I said, I love my mom and dad. They're, they were great, they were fabulous. They just were not actors and had no clue what to do with me. And if you feel that way, I'm sorry, but there are remedies, there's things you can do. You know that it really undermines your confidence, right? And it makes you like, it, I mean, it's hard enough to go to an audition and to pull your, you know, let yourself out there and really be tapped into what you're doing and in the moment, that kind of stuff, that's hard enough. But then if you have this vulture voice going, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be going to law school. You should be trying to be a doctor. You should be blah, 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 human resource. But it's more convenient. It's more practical. That's not going to help you. So you've made the choice to be an actor, awesome, that's great, let's totally embrace it. So there's a couple of things I'm gonna suggest that you can do to get those voices out of your head so that you can just act and put that energy into acting. The first thing I would suggest is if you have a lot of blocks like that, therapy's not a bad idea. I am not a therapist, I'm not a doctor, I cannot tell you to do that, but there's lots of different people in the professional, um, so, uh, the professional world of, of therapy that can help you. So find a great therapist to work with if you haven't already. Find, if you have anxiety issues, work with somebody who deals with anxiety. If you have blocks, work with somebody who has blocks. So go ahead and do that, you, you deserve it. Um, the next thing is self-compassion. I did a blog post on that just a couple of weeks ago, and it's a great way to learn to love yourself and accept yourself as you are and with these voices, and it helps stuff just go away. Helps get rid of those blocks, helps you to listen to yourself more, the good part of yourself that's like, you can do this, you have something to give. And I have a blog post about that that I will link below. Um, the third, the third thing you can do is um, build a strong network. So maybe your parents are still like, I wish you were a lawyer or not, you know, blah, 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 um, or whatever. Um, that's fine. They're your parents. You know, you got to put up with that and try to love them. Be compassionate. Um, build a strong network of support for yourself. Find people that love you and other actors, other artists, people that champion you. Have that support network. So if you have to go home for Thanksgiving and your parents are, you know, barking at you or whatever, you have other people that you can turn to and nurture and grow that. Um, and then also you can just accept that your par parents may never be on board with this. And I know, you know, we're grown-ups. We're grown-ups and our parents are aging or, or, you know, we're in our 20s and our parents have a big influence still or whatever. But we still love our parents and we still care about them. And we're still going to be influenced by them, even if they passed on. So getting to the point of accepting, you know, that's how they are. They, and understanding that it comes from their love for you. They're just afraid that you're not going to be able to support yourself. They're afraid you're going to be starving in an alley living under a bridge. And that's a legitimate fear for a parent to have. The parent's job is to make sure their, their little fledglings can fly and take care of themselves. So understanding that and being compassionate about that and just loving them for that. And you can even maybe say to them sometime, you know, I know you don't get this and that's okay. I understand and you, you are just trying to be helpful. But it's not helpful, so be quiet. No, you don't have to say that part. But um, just accepting that. Um, the most important thing though is believing in yourself, developing that muscle of believing in yourself, no matter what. Believing, and that can come from your passion, from your art. You love to act, right? Or you wouldn't be acting. You wouldn't be in this crazy difficult business if you didn't love it. So nurturing that, nurturing that you love to act and believing in that is going to help. And I have one final exercise you can do um, that helps with blocks, that helps with negative voices and all that kind of stuff. It's called a shifting exercise. And how it is, how, what you do is you can just lay down and get relaxed or sit. And if you have a particular block or a particular you know, voice in your head that says, you shouldn't be doing this, acting or whatever, sit with it and breathe through it for about 45 minutes. Pretend that the issue is a screen door and your breath is the wind going back and forth through it. Just breathe through it. Really feel it and experience it. Breathe through that and just stay with it for about 45 minutes. And then, you know, open your eyes and stand up and go about your day. And notice if that shifts anything in you. 
It should shift. It might take a couple of sessions with that if it's really deep, but it's an excellent exercise to get through anything with that. Okay, that's how you do it, guys. Um, I hope that helps you. I really, really do. I am going to post. I'm going to post a couple of things here right now. Um, how um, this is an article from. Oh, look, we've got a bunch of fabulous people here. This is great. This is an article from Backstage. It says how to become a child actor, which it's not exactly what I'm talking about, but th the title doesn't sound like it, but it has a lot of great tips in it. So go through that. The second thing is the self-compassion for the actor. My blog post that has everything about that has some really great tips about how to be compassionate towards yourself. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you had a great time. I certainly did. Next week, we are going to be on the financial fitness aspect of what we're, uh, of this process that we're going through. So we're going to be talking about financial fitness. And the topic will be actors and the side job. How do you support yourself and be an actor at the same time, pursue your career, and still pay the bills and keep yourself fed so you don't end up under the bridge and your parents' horrors come true? Thank you so much for watching. Let's play a little bit more of our fabulous music. Um, let me just bring it up really quick right here. Um, Tara, you can tell I'm on a queen kick. So here we go. Oh, we're not going to have music. Tag, nab it. Why not? All right, well. Another one bites the dust. Don't let that happen to you. Um, and embrace your acting and embrace yourself. All right, rock and roll. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.